Well, today's video, I guess you could say this picture right here started it all. And this is basically not quite what I built, uh, but this is what started the idea of developing a bigger, better carport than the one I had. Well, how are you? <laughs> Welcome to Coffee and Tools this week. Uh, carport, yeah. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is mine has a gable on it. The one in the picture, of course, did not. So let's go over and take a look at this bad boy. So there's the, uh, the gable that did not come with the kit. But as you can see, I have it. And what I had was material left over, so I went ahead and cut myself my own gable. The reason, from under here, is you cut a gable for this one. And you also cut a gable for the back side of the building, which means you actually end up with some material left over. Uh, some of the leftover material is what I used to create these, this custom look. Uh, such as these these right here at the front. Yeah, that that white post right here is actually trim this covering that normally you wouldn't have But because we had a lot of extra left over I was also able to do these which is the little side pieces These side panels normally are optional and you have to pay for them Well, I didn't pay for them because it was leftover material from the project I'll go back here to the back of the building and you can see the other gable I guess and you know, there's the other gable that had to be cut and they gave me uh, just enough sheets, I thought, to do the job, but I actually had quite a bit left over. Now, this is a bit of a, uh, a stretch here because really, I wasn't sure how to do this, and I looked at other carports and didn't like what I saw, so I thought, well, I'm gonna do my own little thing here. So I went ahead and uh, I had to order these. Uh, these are three inch by three inch pieces for trim, but I got the trim on there and did it the way I wanted it Not the way they normally would would per se do it uh, Also, uh, this one here is tricky and I looked at other carports Unfortunately, they, they end the trim there, but I says hey, you know, wait a minute. Why not? We'll go ahead and we'll trim it out. We'll cut it and we'll, and we'll follow up which on other carports I've seen they just cut this off like right here. They don't take it the rest of the way up but you're gonna have material, uh, extra material left over anyways if you're doing it yourself. So I actually had enough trim left over. I was able to trim this out and make it even prettier. Also trim the door, but I did the door a little different. Uh, the door is a little bit wider than what I ordered uh, and, and also a little taller. Now the reason behind that is really strange. Uh, the way I ordered it was the door would be a six by seven foot door. And what happened was because they don't make a six by seven, they just simply fill your order and give you a six by eight. So I was able to go up a little bit higher than the seven foot door was supposed to be. And then I also uh, set the, the trim very carefully off and set the, the guides very carefully with the door. So the door goes up and down, but it has a little bit wider room than what normally you would have had. So again, this offers more of a custom kind of finish to the carport. Uh, another one that you can't see, but I'll, I'll stand over here and you can sort of have a look at it. <clears throat> I wanted at least a good size uh, tool, tool room building at the back of the carport. And I didn't like the idea of stopping at the five foot mark or something. So I went ahead with a 10. And then when the kit came in, these sheets were actually 10 foot three inch which on with center to center or locating it it meant that I actually gained a three inch so it was actually 10 foot three inch uh, of, of carport or building back here and I've also ordered the wider carport which is 20 foot I had an 18 now I'll show you this if you can see it yeah there's where the old carport was on this side this carport is actually two feet wider and if you look at that it may not look like two feet but the reason is I also over here I'll show you what I did past my Jeep uh, see if I can show it to you the existing concrete pad is what I used which I'm not real fussy on but I did now you'll see also went further over this way as well and so what that meant was I put the carport more towards the edge of the concrete a little bit and also uh, got so I got my two feet and I'm just off the house and again uh, the installers may or may not have been too fussy on that because I had to get a skinny guy to go up there and you know put the uh, screws in on the <laughs> roof at that point. <laughs> but but because I was putting this up myself instead of the installers, I saved a little bit of money. But where things really change was 
Let's open up and take a look on the inside. Uh, what really changed was the uh, amount of material left over. And as I said, the let's see if I got enough light in here. I probably should bring some lights out here and light the whole thing up because it's a little dark. Now, that's not bad, I guess, but I've already started moving some tools into This is going to be mostly basically an automotive shop tools or anything heavy that I don't generally use uh, day to day or don't want around my wood shop or something like a car jack would be a real good item and store some wood out here. I even stored the wood up off the floor with a couple of bricks just to keep moisture away from that lumber. Lumber is so expensive now it's become, this is like, you know, this should be called the treasury department here because that's, you know, that's where all the money's tied up now. And some car ramps, you know, I have to organize, build some shelving. I'll build my way in here and also bring some heavy power out here at some point. But the, what I'm trying to exp express today or, or just help with is the idea of size. This is a 10 by 20, so I'm going to stand back here where the uh, engine lift is and sort of give you, I'll see if I can give you a perspective. It's pretty hard to give you a perspective on the size of the building, but you can see there's a lot of space in here. In fact, I had the uh, garden tractor in here, but when you start the garden tractor up, the fumes are so strong, it's pretty bad and intense, and I'm like, you know what, we'll do something else. And again, because I have material left over, I closed this one corner off. So I brought this side of the carport panel out an extra panel and stop there and that way the tractor is sitting out of the weather inside in a small protected area up underneath the carport out of the rain you know that kind of thing so it's, it's really cool and i've got the jeep here a little tight with it but uh some things you know you just can't help i did want to bring the carport out further than this but because of the concrete slab is such a mess it was really hard and then i've got a garage right here two-car garage so I really could have come up another couple of feet, but with a carport like a model like this, what you want to do is come up in five foot increments. Well, five foot increment comes up over here and sort of interferes with the garage door. So this sort of thing became like, okay, let's let's deal with what we have. Let's deal with the size. And so the carport in total is 20 feet by 26. That's the roof and everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Actually, I just lied to you. Okay. There's a six inch overhang, so it's technically 21 feet by 26 at the roof level. The actual structure is 20 by 25. Yeah, okay, we got that. I'm so glad I got that cleared up with myself. And you can see I still have some pieces left over here. Now, uh, heck, let's take a look at some of the stuff that's left over. Anyway, there's the carport in general. It, Sort of doesn't quite match the red of the house, but uh, that was a given. <laughs> yeah, I did what I could, right? You know. So we'll take a walk back here and uh, just take a look at what's left over from all this. And this is the thing. Your installer that comes out for free, normally he would take this stuff away. So here's all the sheets. There's uh, the white sheets, of course, as you saw over there, and also have I have all this red sheet stuff here still too. So I could potentially um, I'm going to try to figure out a way to use up some of these uh, sheets that were left over. These are pieces from cutting cutting up what you needed for doing the carport, and if I had uh, cut it just a little bit tighter, I think I could have actually uh, ended up with uh, you know having even more material to work with. But I'm really pleased. And again, uh, this is custom. I built it the way I want it to look. So this is not the way the installer would have put this up. Matter of fact, uh, this trough piece here, I believe this lip normally goes underneath this panel. I wanted it on top to add a little more white. And, uh, you know, I wanted the look to be a little bit more, uh, you know, a little cooler. So potentially we have because I installed it, or I put it up myself, I have a slightly bigger door. I have this nice little gable piece out the front, didn't pay for it. I've got little side panels there, didn't pay for it. And I had a couple of extra pieces of trim length left over, enough to uh, put these in, didn't pay for it. And I also have trim on the inside, all the way up and across on the top, on the inside of this carport here, which again, didn't pay for it. It's just it's because these are the items that the installer probably would have put on his truck and taken away when the job was done. 
but because I installed it and did it myself, I got everything that the kit comes with and and, and a lot of extra. So, I'm, you know, I should be pleased, right? I'm very pleased. Uh, the other thing I did here, uh, it's kind of weird, but I'm probably going to nail a piece of 2 by 4 or something here to the concrete because this is where I want the car to stop so that the car is inside the carport and I can still walk in front of the car here, but at this point I can open the front door, I can open the passenger door right here between these hoops and have the car over here, which still allows me enough space here to drive the tractor in and out. And like I said, I'm not going to be keeping the tractor. I was going to keep the tractor in here, but as it turns out, it's probably just a bad idea. Or uh, I guess I could back the tractor in at the door here. But when you start it up, the whole place just fills with fumes. And the other thing that uh, you have to be aware of when you're doing these yourself is, you know, it's a lot of work. This normally an installer gang would come out here. They probably have this thing up in about four or five hours. I took almost a month to put this up, but I took my time. I didn't work, you know, eight hours a day or something. I worked on it, you know, maybe an hour two or two per day. I took my time. Uh, I wanted the gables uh, cut so they were exactly, you know, accurate and it took a long time to get that cut. And of course, the other nemesis problem is if you decide to do something like this for yourself, uh, you can see the other show we just had previously, you have to buy that. Yeah, you sort of, you know, I recommend you should buy it even though, yeah, it's a piece of junk, but it, uh, it'll make a nice cut. I also have a little bit of material here left over too. Uh, here's the trim pieces left over. And there's all the square tubing uh, that was cut up from the various sizes because like this piece of tubing like right here that goes up to the ceiling, you have to cut that. So when you cut the length, you end up with, you know, pieces like that. So overall, pretty pleased. It, uh, it's a pretty strong little carport. Uh, like I said, I did the door a little different. And uh, right now we're, you know, hanging the door was not that hard, but I'll tell you the secret to how to hang one of those doors if you're by yourself or you only have a, some light person to help you, uh, is that right there. I used the engine lift and I extended the crane part of it out as far as I could and that lifted the door all the way up to here so I could hold it up in place with the engine lift and then, you know, set everything up and then nail my track, nail my door in kind of thing. So really worked out uh, overall I have to admit I'm really pleased with the results and I really like this little extra panel here I had considered the possibility of paying and having this closed off but here I had it done I guess you could say this is another one I had this done for free because this was leftover cuttings from the panels from when we put the car poured up so awesome you know but like I said uh, let's talk nuts and bolts here it's not an easy project. Yeah, so let's uh, let's talk about the nuts and bolts here. It uh, it's a hot, long, sweaty job. I ordered this in like I think it was January, and I didn't get it until April 29th. This is now actually this is now June, but spent most of the month of May putting this guy up. Seriously, but like I said, I only worked a couple hours here, a couple hours there. Uh, if the weather was crappy, it didn't work, it was too hot, it didn't work, you know, that kind of thing. So I just put a few hours here, a few hours there, and slowly got this whole thing up until we, you know, put the last screw in. Uh, last screw went in probably about a week ago, and I've been trying to, you know, move into the carport since then. So the uh, results here are, like I said, this is a couple of things about this that you have to think about. We had a carport here, and my car my specific car here uh, just give you a quick side shot of it there there you go there's my car I was only parking uh, using about 10 to 12 feet of the old carport when I par pulled it in here so I measured it one day and I kept checking it. I thought well if I wanted to use 15 feet how much of that car would fit in well the whole car basically fit into the 15 feet which I was surprised I didn't realize the car was small enough to do that also, with the Jeep, same thing. Uh, when I had it in the carport, and have it, actually it's in further right now, I keep the cab 
in the shade under the carport. The rest of the car I'm not that worried about or concerning because it gets sun and shade throughout the entire day from the carport at different angles. So the situation here is kind of crazy. So let me let me take a look. I'll just show it to you from an angle and I'll take a, I'll show you what the deal was with this. Just in case anybody's not sure, but there's the Jeep or the Jeep and the car in the carport. And I'll just show you the space I have up here. As you can see, I have a, a great big space here. I can just walk right through, no problem at all. And uh, just, just for reference. So there you have it. Uh, I'm gonna provide a link in the description below for the company that I used uh, to get this carport from. Uh, people are gonna ask prices. Okay, locally, uh, to get this particular size of carport with these features, this, again, is more custom than what I would have received, was a, about $6,500, but that was delivered for free and installed for free. And you got to keep all that in mind because uh, I went the other way and decided I'll just have them drop it off. So it's just, it's just free delivery at that point, and I'll put the darn thing up in my own time, but I'll put it up the way I want it, and I'll have a lot of extra material left over so I'll be able to custom, which I did. But... The cost was about $3,500 instead of $65. So, like I said, save $3,000. And I have one, two, three, four, at least four or five, five custom things done that I would not have got if I had paid the $6,500 or even if I had paid uh, more but had it installed and, you know, installed for free. As, as you know, that sounds pretty good, but I wouldn't have had all these features or I would have had to pay more. For those features so it's up to you it's really your call i would not uh if you're an older gentleman or you don't have a lot of friends or help i might not recommend you know trying to pull this little number off but if you can do it and you think you have the time to do it hey you can save yourself a little bit of money and you can custom build the carport the way you want it it's it's all i love it i think it's i think it's awesome but you know, it's for me Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. And the contest, the contest, we are gonna wait, I think a few more days, and then we're gonna release that jet pack. And then the next item we have coming up, I believe is a, is a Sprint hotspot. I've got another, I think it's 8,000. It's not an M, 8,000. 8, got another Sprint hotspot coming up with, uh, at least it'll have a cable, and I believe I think we have a charger for it as well. And that'll be a giveaway in another week or so, so keep watching. <laughs> Until then, guys, have a good one.